All right, welcome to Dora Dunsey, the only podcast where you can hear all latest in television and entertainment news with two many else with exactly the same opinions. I'm one of those hosts, Stephen Allen, and another one is... John Burke, the third one is... Kyle Bridger. I would say that I am the Game of Thrones spinoff because I'm forgetting the name. Land of Dragons, what is it? Heart House of Dragons. House of Dragons. House of Dragons. To John's, don't worry, darling. <laughs> To Dave's Avatar 2. Got the blue on. I'm ready. Let's oh, go. Yeah. Let's go. Yep. You're starting your transformation right mm. now. Yeah. I am. Yeah, we're going to be talking about all those trailers. A lot of trailers dropped in the last week. We're going to round them up. We're going to talk about them. We're going to react to them. And then we're also going to react to the Ozark series finale. Mm. John. I should have had you do like the O in the opening and the four things that you're going to see in this episode. <laughs> oh, yeah. But no, no. Too much work. Too much work. I actually just, somebody like, I think my girlfriend showed me that. Uh, I didn't know this. <laughs> I'm an idiot. The Ozark, there's an O and there's the four things. Of course, they're the things in the episode. Yeah. But they spell out Ozark. Each one is, is, is like Z. Oh, A, like each thing uh, is in the shape of the letter that okay. is, so every episode says Ozark. It's yeah. Whoosh. Maybe I re- recognize that subconsciously. I yeah. just assumed it 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 kind of correlated with what they were going with. Yeah. Anyways, we're not talking about that yet. We got this first segment. Um, don't don't remember what is it, John? In and out points. In and out. In out. In out. In out. Yes, it is in and out points. Just just two tonight. The first one we're going to talk about is the the domestic box office of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Summer movie season is finally here. It's finally here. We got some blockbusters coming out. Let's see. Let's talk about the, how much it actually made and what it may mean for our bet. It made $187 million this opening weekend, the domestic total. Some... Some were predicting the two hundred million dollar opening. It, you know, it's it's down from um, the two hundred sixty million opening of Spider Man No Way Home. Of course, it was going to be, but, but like at the same time, that was at like the height of Omicron. <laughs> like somehow that got two hundred sixty million. This one here, two hundred million or no less than two hundred million, one hundred eighty seven million. But you add in the international, it's already made over four hundred fifty million worldwide. It's the biggest opening of twenty twenty two. And the seventh biggest opening for a Marvel Studios film. Mm. How you feel, Kyle? I feel pretty good. And I mean, with how many uh, how many um, theaters they were showing this thing in, I'm like, how can I not feel good? I mean, it's bound to get some money somewhere if it's the only movie he's showing eight thousand times. So yeah, there was nothing else playing. It was <laughs> the, the theater count. It was a post pandemic record of four thousand five hundred thirty four theaters that were showing it that's the seventh seventh most of all time Uh that that many theaters were showing this film and one of those theaters the amc in Times square was having 70 screenings seven zero on just the opening day alone that's wild i don't even know how you can fit that all in there i I, just just one location 70 there's a 3 p.m there's a 305 p.m there's a 315 p.m like who is the person that's like oh, i can't make the three but 305 I, c- I could swing that i could make it by then <laughs> get off oh, at three man. into the theaters by 305 Perfect. <laughs> and then watching 25 minutes of trailers yes. <laughs> um i also stop stop calling it thursday previews i keep seeing all the headlines it made this in thursday previews alone it's like there's no more thursday previews uh, yeah, there's no more the midnight weekend. showings that is the weekend yeah, that it's like, is the weekend at this point. The movie dropped at 3 p.m. here. Like, when is it going to be? Well, let's keep moving it up a little bit. Let's maybe do midnight on Wednesday there or whatever. That's like yeah. Thursday. Soon it's going to be like, all right, the movie drops Tuesday at 1 p.m. now. <laughs> like, <laughs> but, but um, yeah, and then I saw all the um, the uh, merchandise swag, the popcorn buckets that they were doing. Is that what you're talking about? I, I just walk. freeze. Oh, there yeah, we go. You, you oh. Froze a little bit. oh, I just froze. Anyways, I said, I said, yeah, <laughs> I said, uh, uh, I saw all the swag 
That yeah. they had like a popcorn box made out of this wh- whatever cube Ooh, thing. Some plastic junk. It's yeah. just gonna go in the back of a closet. <laughs> yeah. But I'm yeah. like, that's. I mean, this is like a, a coronation of uh, you know, back to movies. I feel yeah. like for this summer. But yeah, Dave, it, you save that popcorn box for like 20 years, and you'll make back the price of the popcorn. That's probably sure. Sh- that's probably true. <laughs> yeah. How many uh, popcorn boxes does that guy who watched Spider-Man 292 times have probably at this point? <laughs> oh, my God. Was he at all 70 screenings at Times Square? Um, yeah. It's, it has no competition for the next few weeks. There's nothing mm-hmm. really playing until Maverick. Yeah, that's and scary. It's, you know, Maverick's not going to... That, that'll probably take all the IMAX screens from Doctor Strange, but until then... It's just gonna. Well, it, it's a month. That's a solid month. Yeah, it's a solid month of doing business. You guys are in I'll be, for I it. I will be. I will be curious to see the the legs on this thing. The I, week to week. I've been seeing some stuff, even from the few Marvel fans I know outside of the Good Bad Watch. Well, I think they all liked it. Some of my coworkers seem to not have liked this one mm. as much, and I've seen like you know. I think as like the week pro- pro- the weekend progressed, like they were expecting two hundred million. It's da- I mean one eighty is nothing to sneeze at here, but mm. I think people thought it was gonna be more, and they kind of like it was front loaded. Friday was real high, but then by Sunday it was lower than expected. Mm. But it's still gonna make a lot of money. I mean, it's not gonna. So I still um, think I yeah, still think we're looking good you're still, for this. Yeah. I'm hoping um, we can keep this goodwill with Marvel alive until July here with uh, Thor: Love and Thunder. That's yeah, what I'm I saying. mean maybe. I mean people love their Marvel stuff, so I'm imagining mm-hmm. it will do uh, just as well. But I think the the difference is that the busier season is right then and there, so you yeah. just gotta worry. Yeah, it's always good to get the first one in, in that May slot. Um, real quick, I I did a little Instagram poll, and I asked which host will make the most money with their films this summer. I asked, just a quick wow. reminder, just a quick reminder, Kyle has Doctor Strange, Minions, The Rise of Gru, and Lightyear. I have Thor, Love and Thunder, Jurassic World, Dominion, and the DC League of Super Pets. And John has Top Gun, Maverick, Nope, and Elvis. And I said, Kyle, you definitely have the strongest box office team. John has the film I would want to see personally. Yeah. But I look, think that clouds people's judgment. Yeah. I think people forget how much Minions makes because yeah. they, you know, they they don't really. I think people forgot for me how much Jurassic World makes yeah. here in Thor. How did so the results of this poll? We got Kyle and John both leading here, tied with forty percent each. I get the scraps at twenty percent here. I mean, I don't love my team with what I got, but I, I think I'm more than twenty percent. I will I will say that you already got. I think so. I was a. I was actually surprised at how much the Jurassic Park movies make. Like, yeah. I knew the first one was huge, but I didn't realize the second one was that big either. Yeah, and this is supposedly the end of the Jurassic era. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. But, all right. Uh, our next in and out point involves another blockbuster film that's just started filming its final film in the franchise, and that's Fast X, Fast 10. And we got an exclusive, not oh, not really, man. but we got a video of what it's like on the set after the first week of filming from from star Vin Diesel and director Justin Lin. Something feels off, though. What do you think, Justin? Week one. Just finished week one. How does it feel? It feels like the beginning of, uh, of an epic ending. Could, is it fair to say that this will be the best one? my heart yes so it's hard to see the reaction from justin (laughs) lynn but you can probably hear it in his voice kyle did he look very excited to you well i know how this ends so uh (laughs) this is a hostage video when i saw it this was a hostage video dude i mean it it looks like he's dealing with a madman and he's just yeah. trying to figure out what to, he needs to say in order to get the camera off <laughs> he's him. He's trying to say also, yes until he can flee. <laughs> yeah. Also, Vin Diesel looks high as hell. He can barely <laughs> open his eyes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that's the, he's thinking too much about his family. He's getting weepy. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, all right. So a day or so later after this video was posted, it was announced that Justin Lin, the director, was leaving the project. Supposedly, the director had enough. 
uh, Universal and Vin wanted to, to change the locked script. A location was cut due to everything going on in the, you know, Eastern Europe with the war in Ukraine. And, and there was a villain that was yet to be cast, but filming was proceeding anyways. And, and then on April 23rd, Vin and Lynn had a major disagreement. And after um, Diesel had some, some new notes on the script, the meeting ended with a slammed door. So yeah, um, Justin dropped out. He said, this movie is not worth my mental health. That was his quote there. And after five other fast movies, on April 25th, a settlement was reached for him to leave. And he's walking away from an estimated 10 to $15 million payday because this is just part one of a two-part finale. But but the thing is, is this guy's been doing this um, with Vin Diesel for yeah. uh, several films now. Yeah. And at this point, it's got to be like uh, family in the sense that you know what to expect with this dude. And do you want to deal with that for the next two movies and the next, you it know, could be like six, a year of filming. Six it could months be. Of, yeah. yeah, filming. That sounds horrendous and apparently i mean i at least from what i'm seeing on twitter and rumors and whatnot it was that like also justin lynn was upset that he's vin diesel the same complaints that the rock had was he was showing up late to on set and stuff like that and not taking it professionally yeah yeah because this is not the the first fast clash i mean there yeah no secret that dwayne johnson had some issues with him he left the franchise and a source for the daily news says Quote, Diesel shows up to late to set. He doesn't know his lines and he shows up out of shape. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know. Uh, the, the budget for this film is already, according to the Hollywood Reporter, creeping upwards over three hundred million dollars. That's without marketing publicity. Um, three hundred million. Yeah. For and one, I, not I, both. I, I'm not sure if it's a combined cost for the two, but three hundred million without marketing publicity at this point. And in the article, it said it's at least a hundred million for the cast alone. Obviously, Vin and and the whole crew, but Charlie's their own. Jason Momoa, I believe, is joining. Brie Larson is joining. So it's just a hundred million mm. at least alone for the cast. All wow. the stunts, obviously, you got it. it's 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 really racking up money. And every day that this film was waiting, waiting for a director, because after Justin left, mid you know midway through the first week or two. It was costing the studio upwards of a million dollars a day just wow. to keep the crew and locations on standby, just to keep them waiting, just to keep them wherever they are. Just a million dollars just down the drain each That's day. So crazy. it's like, easy. Well, it's like they just need to get anyone here. And I was surprised I didn't get a call. I mean, <laughs> I'd do it. I'll just show up. You'll be there. You'll be there for the family. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm always a part of the family. But um, it looks like we have. Uh, Louis Lettieri, uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, uh, but he's been tapped to take over the franchise. He did the 2008 The Incredible Hulk film, Now You See Me, and the first two Transporter films. So he definitely has some action, some special effects work. He, he knows what he's doing there, but obviously, you know, I think I saw in an article, like, a lot of people were like, uh, do I really want to do with this? You know, I would have to be almost like probably like a yes man to to Vin. It's like mm -hmm. I'm going to be just going along here, you know, what with what the studio and what the, you know, the main actor probably wants. Yeah. It's crazy that they're still making this these films, man, and that Vin Diesel has that much power. We're talking about Vin Diesel here. Yeah. The greatest director, yeah. or possibly greatest director <laughs> of Steven all. Spielberg. Yeah, <laughs> check check the archives for that in an outpoint story. But yeah, it's it's like the first one, two thousand one, was like the plot was them like stealing DVD players or something. Like it was, like, and now they're going to space and like what is happening? Mm. What is going on? But all right here, those are our in and out points. We've been talking a lot about big movies and we got a big trailer that dropped today. Let's react to it. It's time for a coming attraction. Here are some exciting coming attractions. Oh, that looks good. We actually have three coming attractions this week. I will save you guys from hearing that two more times. We'll just go all, all three coming <laughs> attractions. One, two, three here. And we're starting with... The one that came out today, 13 years after the smash hit, James Cameron is back with the first of four sequels 
Avatar 2, The Way of Water. All right here. This this trailer came out with Doctor Strange. I saw a lot of people almost comparing it to when like Star Wars Episode 1 trailer came out, like with, tied with a movie. And they're like, I'm just going to go to the theater for the trailer. So that probably helped Kyle with those box office tickets here. People are rushing to the theater to see this trailer. We saw it at the comfort of our homes on a laptop <laughs> yeah. screen. So I'm sure it's the same effect. But let's start off with John. What did you think of the trailer of Avatar The Way of Water? Did they always have tails? <laughs> oh, they yeah. definitely do. That's how they... Oh, uh, yeah. Did they? Okay. I, I, I don't know. Plug it's in. Been I guess I'll say. so long since I saw the first <laughs> Avatar that I, I forgot they had tails. Okay. Mm. Um, uh, If you had played this as like oh yeah you know i took out all the references to the second one and played this as like oh yeah check out this trailer for the first avatar i probably wouldn't be able to tell you it wasn't yeah. the first one just because i don't remember i mean you substitute the scenes of them in the first one flying to the sky for them swimming underwater and i feel like it's just the same thing so far i mean we'll see when it comes out but um i i don't know is it is it going to be worth the hype i i'm kind of leaning towards no however I guess I can understand why some people might be leaning towards yes. I don't know. Yeah. I think this is like, it's one of those films that like, it's been so talked about and delayed. I mean, it was delayed eight times, um, you know, and it's going to be possibly releasing December 16th, 2022. That's the plan right now. And it's just like, people are either going to go in and be like, I just want to see how bad this is, or I want to see how good this is. Will it live up? It's like, I think there's just a curiosity factor of like, why are we doing this? Like, what is this? And it's just like, will it be as good? So I think there's already people just going to, like that first weekend may be big and then it'll be like, it won't have the legs that. It's been 16 years? 13 years. 13? But it hasn't been 13 years worth of work. It's only been a 13 year gap, right? Uh, Well, they haven't been filming and doing production for 13 years. It's been a long time. (laughs) I got the stats here with the numbers. Uh, The preliminary shooting for... Avatar 2 and 3, they did them back to back, started in August of 2017, with principal photography starting the next month in September of 2017, and it lasted three years until September 2020. I'm sure it was delayed a couple of months because of the pandemic, but still, 2017 to 2020. This is where I wonder, you know, they always have to do the most up-to-date special effects after shooting something in 2017. And that's going to finally air in 2022, not to mention Avatar 3, which is going to premiere in December of 2024. That means it's been seven years since they started filming in those seven years. Is it still going to hold up? I don't I don't know. Well, I I mean, I think it could hold up because because when you watch the trailer, I mean, it looks like a beautiful video game. Yeah, and video game is a that, great word that, for this. That yeah. is a essentially what this is. I mean, from the trailer, what in the trailer could uh, feasibly not be live action? I mean, <laughs> you have some where their face it's like a face swap almost mm-hmm. over computer generated image. So I don't know if the filming of the stuff is necessarily going to be a problem because there's not much. I don't of like, the original footage <laughs> of the original footage. It's like. A lot of what seems like James Cameron fiddling away with CGI uh, to create this world. But even then, you know, graphics change so quickly that can you keep up with that even with the changing um, landscape of like computer generated image? I I just I I don't know if that's possible. And like or is the goal to create this timeless CGI world that. You know, people will be able to watch it for 50, 60 years and still, mm. you know, feel something from the the CGI. I don't know. I just, I, I'm like John. It looks like it could be from Avatar 1 mm. and I wouldn't know. It, it looks pretty, but I'm like, well, <laughs> and I, I, think- I feel, I honestly feel bad for all the actors that are probably going through all this work to then mm. just be. <laughs> I feel I like Robert Sam that. Worthington was, you know, was in this big film and he's probably been doing this for the last seven mm-hmm. years and then he's been not been able to do anything else. Mm-hmm. But yeah, 
I just, the, to me, the, the actual like avatars, even in the first one and this one too, they always just like look weird. And I wrote down like they have like this video game blocky like body frame in their face. It just seems it just doesn't work for me. I don't know. It's just it's like too it's it's too close to being a human. But then it's like not far enough to be something special. It's like this uncanny valley, dude. Yeah, that's a it's a, a real scary thing, actually. Um, but I think hopping off of what Kyle was saying earlier is like, yeah, the technology changes, but do you want to stray that far away from the first avatar? If you can go nicer, you know what I yeah. mean? Like yeah. is someone going to the theater and, and buying tickets to that back to back showing of one and two or whatever they plan on doing. Are they going to be mm-hmm. like, this looks totally different than the first one. Like, you know, you kind of have to gauge and, and, and uh, if you can do it, do you do it? You know, it, it's crazy. It, it, it's such a big uh, such a big gap. I mean, even the last two or three years, the uh, consumer market of being able to do stuff like this, like, you know, for like me and you has exploded. So I can only imagine the higher end stuff is, is going nuts. So I, I don't mm. know. It, I think it's going to be very telling, you know, that first week when, when we figure out what people's opinions are, you know, yeah. we'll have to see well, what the reviews are. Uh, uh, but again, I mean, we're talking about the, uh, the imagery of how it looks, but that's not e- to even mention the story because yeah. we get no sense of what that is here because yeah. it's just like flashes of, hey, remember this world? And then like, I'll do anything for this family at the end. And that's like, all yeah. right, cool. So Wait, is that line it- from the Fast and the Furious? I'll do anything <laughs> like I did look it up. Vin Diesel's in this movie, so it could be <laughs> him. I don't know. There's Yeah, there's one line in this. I know one thing. Whenever we go, wherever we go, this family is our fortress. Yeah. So, I mean, and that was people's main complaints about this movie. It was like, or the first Avatar is like the the story is kind of, you know, and I'm sure there'll be, I'm sure there'll be more, but like, even in this teaser, the plot looks very similar. It's like another group is like taking over their land and we have to fight to keep it. It's like, to me, it's, I, I complained to our friends at the good man, the watchable. I understand this was a big movie. I get it. I was there in the theater watching it. It's the biggest movie of all time worldwide, two point eight billion dollars. Mm-hmm. But there's like no pop culture capital to this thing. You, you saw it in theaters, and I think like you never cared to rewatch it at home. Mm-hmm. Like, does it even play at home? I mean, we, the story yeah. is pretty weak and derivative of you know other classic stories when it first came out. I'm sure the effects were good in the theater at the time, but like at home, is uh, it going to still play? Like. I think everyone came to, you know, the theater just because it, oh, 3D, it's going to look cool. But like, is 3D cool now? Like, mm. I I think maybe uh, James Cameron didn't sell this film and being like, oh, people can rewatch this. It was like, hey, you do this, you're you can build a war, a whole world around mm. this. And that guess what? I isn't it Disney doing that or something? They're building a whole like park I guess they around are, but this. Like, I thought they already did. Then did they not? I don't know if it got delayed. I definitely have heard of this, but like Disney, why? Like it's like it's not like it's the Wizarding World of Harry Potter here, where it like, might just, not be to you, but maybe I to guess. a kid. I mean, maybe that's I the guess. goal. Maybe that's the goal that he's going for. Is like these next two or three or four films, or next two or three films. You know, two, three, and four uh, could be the makings of Star Wars potentially. Mm. That might be how he sold it. You get this world. Look at this world I created, and you can have it for eternity and build theme parks Mm. around it. I definitely, I definitely get that. It's like, yeah, like the first one, massive, two point eight billion. I, I, I totally get it. But like, for yeah, to like to build a theme park off of like this one thing, at least at first. Like, because mm-hmm. at this point, like, you built a world off of Harry Potter after those eight films and the millions and millions and millions of books were sold. It mm-hmm. merchandise. Okay, there was a clear demand for this. But, like, outside of that first film in 2009, we don't know what the demand is. And I'm looking now that, as you mentioned, John, the Pandora, the world of Avatar, I guess, is in Disney's Animal Kingdom. It opened May 27th, 2017. Yeah. Um, I've not heard anything about this, but I guess it's a pretty big construction feat, and they have like floating islands, floating mm, islands, wow. and stuff like that. And 
Yeah, I mean, they they went all in on it. And yeah, 2017, that was not recent. That was when they started filming. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's I don't know. Yeah, yeah. but this, they're going to re-release the original in theaters in September. And then the sequel will be released in a variety of formats, including 3D, 4K, and the high frame rate of 48 frames per second, like they did with those Hobbit movies. And, and, and as an NFT, no, nah, I'm just kidding. But maybe who knows? <laughs> What's funny? Probably is forty-eight is like, at least for like, like what I do. That's that's lower than standard. Like it's mm-hmm. not high frame rate. That's like slow. You know, like mm-hmm. that's a little weird. <laughs> but um, I will say I am glad they changed the title font. SNL roast them back in in twenty seventeen again. Everything goes back to twenty seventeen. Twenty seventeen <laughs> was the year of Avatar. It that's sounds with like the multiverse split. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, they 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 picked on the, the papyrus font. Uh, of whatever it was there um but yeah that's funny change the font we're good we're, we're good to go for <laughs> avatar two three four and five that's insane i i, re- I really hope the first one the second one just like but creators I, I, they yeah. have these four other films it's like what I are mean, you gonna do have they have they secured like funding and everything for it or are they gonna like let two go and then finish three and then see like Disney Plus exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> Direct oh my to video god. on demand. Oh my <laughs> god. Could you imagine? Oh my god. All right. Well, I just don't think that I don't think that they would even allow that to happen. No. Yeah. They, you they would shove it down our throats so much that that they the would be like the amount of synergy we're going to get. Yeah. It's going to be and they'll tie it with something. Oh, watch Avatar 2 for the first 2 minutes of Doctor Strange, Spider Man, Thor, Ragnarok, <laughs> Magic Hour. It's like okay, I gotta whatever. <laughs> like yeah, I gotta watch that now. But all right, let's move to another trailer, another movie. One I'm actually I'm very excited for uh, based on the trailer here. Don't worry, darling. It's Olivia Wilde's follow up film after Booksmart, and it let's see, it stars Florence Pugh and Harry Styles as a young, happy couple living in a seemingly perfect 1950s town that it's created and paid by this mysterious company that Harry Styles' character works for. All right here. Uh, almost a little bit of maybe a possible like early Epcot. This is the idea for the uh, experimental prototype community of tomorrow. Uh, Disney here. Uh, what do you think, Kyle, of the trailer of Don't Worry Darling? Uh, well, your your subject line gave me a little bit more info because I was a little <laughs> bit confused by the um, trailer, but it definitely it seems like a two part trailer almost like a, a, it sets up a certain vibe and then it pulls you a different direction about halfway through. Um, and I'm interested. I, I, I'm i interested in the cast. I love Florence Pugh. Uh, it's got this thriller vibe going for it. Um you know, I'm hit or miss on Harry Styles, especially his acting. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, I like Olivia Wilde. So, you know, I'm down for it. It looks interesting. Uh, the cast looks exciting. Um, and, you know, they just put enough suspense in here with a little bit of, uh, you know, pizzazz. But a lot of. Um, a lot of uh people going down on people in this trailer, like three some, or four times. Some watermelon sugar. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, for uh, sure. Yeah, there's a lot going on. There's that. There's uh some dance sequences. Yeah, it's, the visuals. I mean, it was like it has this picture perfect like '50s vibe. The the colors mm-hmm. of their costumes, like the suits and the dresses, they they have this like immaculate clean. Yeah, look, it, it just looks. You know, it has the Stepford Wives feel. And Mm -hmm. yeah, it has this first trailer where everything seems hunky dory. It's all fine. And then it's like, oh, wait, something's off here. And like she's somehow figuring out some kind of conspiracy. Like they're doing something out there. And there's like some earthquake construction sounds and the eggs are fake. Like what's going on here? But John, what did you think of the trailer? Oh, I agree with you guys. I think it's pretty cool looking. I, I, I am excited to see it. Um. At first, when, it, when we first did the tone shift, it reminded me of, uh, and I'm blank on the name of it, that one show we watched where the woman was going to have her memories uploaded or something and she escaped through the sewer. Um, Made for love? Yeah, I think okay, so. Okay, yeah, okay. It kind of reminded that. me of that, but like serious, where that one, not, not that that one wasn't serious, but this feels serious, you know? Yeah. Mm. So uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm interested. 
I, I want to see it. When I was watching the trailer, I thought, because I had no idea about the byline, I thought it was mm. about like the creation of the atomic bomb and mm. like the family got brought That's there and they all had to be Oppenheimer. We're getting that yeah. next summer. Yeah. <laughs> Quiet about it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Chris Pine is playing like this kind of villainy yeah. role. I, I'm liking him so far in that. There's Olivia Wilde also starring in the film. Uh, yeah, the cast, like just seeing like, oh, like, I, I like that actor, like Timothy uh, was it Simons in there from mm-hmm. Veep. Like, oh, I like him. So, yeah, I'm very excited about the cast. It looks really cool. Just, you know, it seems like it has like this mystery thriller element. Yeah. Uh, it's it's coming out right in that Oscar, you know, time, September 23rd. You know, maybe it'll it'll pick up something here. But um, yeah. that's like interesting. Looks it looks cool. Looks cool. Yeah, I'm definitely more into that than a uh, Avatar. Too. <laughs> I will say, I don't know about me. This looks cinematically better than the Avatar. Yeah. Two but, yeah. And also House of the Dragon, I will say, which is our next thing. Spoiler. But like, maybe it's just the amount of CGI. And maybe my computer screen couldn't handle it. But like this, the the real life color palette of Don't Worry Darling looks 10 times better than the other two trailers we're talking about. But I think it could be the... I know, I know you talked about it earlier, but it could be the frames per second thing. You Maybe. might not be used to seeing like that many frames per second, especially when it's computer generated. I mean, you watch Maybe. something 60 frames per second on a PS5 video or video Xbox or something. Feel, yeah. It's going to look uh, way different than something at like 24 or 30 frames per second That's on film, you know? Is- I do up to 144 in some games. So seeing 60 now for me is yeah. like, what is this? And then you yeah. drop down to like 24 for TV and it's like, what the hell? It's crazy. It's, like, <laughs> it's yeah. crazy it's like what you get used to. When I listen to my p- podcast at like, you know, 1.3, 1.4, and then I go back to one and everyone talks <laughs> so <laughs> slow. Like, yeah. Yep. But all right. I, I mentioned it. Our last uh, trailer we're talking about, a teaser for House of the Dragon set 200 years before the events of Game of Thrones. The series chronicles the beginning of the end of House Targaryen, the events leading up to the Targaryen Civil War, known as the Dance of the Dragons, and the war itself. It's going to drop August 21st this summer. It's coming. I'm going to leave it to you guys here because you guys are our Game of Thrones experts because I didn't know anything about it. I watched the final season. I I predicted the finale. I'll still always have that claim to fame here. I figured it out, but... (laughs) <laughs> Are you guys ready to jump back in and get hurt again by watching House of the Dragon, John? Uh, mm, I don't know. I didn't read the book, so uh, this is all like piecing together a puzzle that I, I don't know if I have all the pieces to. So uh, I'll probably watch it just because I want to see if it's any good, but I'm not really looking forward to it, if you get what I mean. Um, I'm more curious why they're going forward with this without trying to like do anything about the end of the actual Game of Thrones show. You know what I mean? Like every, not everybody, I can't speak for everybody, but a lot of people didn't like it. And if you have the opportunity to maybe like do some tweaks or do anything, I don't know. I don't know. It just seems a little bit strange. Do like a Dexter new blood and kind of, uh, no one likes her ending. Let's try something else here. Yeah, or just veto it and redo it. Like obviously, I mean, I don't know. We won't get into it. We talked about it (laughs) extensively and we did insert episode (laughs) number in post. (laughs) Yeah. All right, but Kyle, uh, what do you think of the trailer? Are you are you in on the House of the Dragon? Uh, I will say it made me much more interested uh, in going back and checking it out. It's like, oh yeah, I do miss this world. I kind of I kind of find it interesting, and um, so I will say the trailer did entice me. Uh, and I thought it was nice of the trailer to think that I would remember anything <laughs> to do with houses because I they start tried to explain it to give you the setup. And I'm like, I have no idea. These names are flying past me. I have no idea who's who, but good luck. Um, so I'm worried about that. And we're going to have to do like homework to figure out who these people are again. Um, but uh, but yeah, I'm interested. And I, I agree with you. I think it's cinematic. Uh, you know, it, it, it had a, a mixture of like, oh, you know, there's going to be some of that, um, you know, close table talk but then these big pieces with the dragons and stuff i i, I mean i'm interested yeah. I, I just to see just to see what it's like and if it sucks then i know i can drop it you know yeah 
Because what's interesting with this is when Game of Thrones started way back when season one, the budget was not the budget it later had in the final season. Mm. I believe this budget, I don't know the exact numbers here, is probably closer to the budget of the final season of Game of Thrones. So they're mm. kind of like they're starting at the end in terms of probably CGI and all that stuff. Like it took for forever for Game of Thrones to get dragons. We're starting with dragons. Like yeah. it's, so it's like who only knows what this thing is going to balloon to. Mm -hmm. um, and there is a line that they mention in this trailer. And for me, it's like it said, um, history does not remember blood. It remembers names. And that's that's all I could pick out from this. I'm like, yeah, that name sounds familiar. Oh, I recognize that throne. OK, yeah, there's a dragon egg. Oh, it's like it's like <laughs> it's like the Easter eggs, like literally. With, yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, there's the violence. There's that ugly, like bleach white hair that like doesn't look good on anyone uh but yeah it's like oh check 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 everything seems to be there mm -hmm. am i gonna watch it yeah I'll, I'll watch the first one for this and mm -hmm. who knows you know do i want to be a part of the conversation because i'm never a part of the conversation when it comes to marvel and all that stuff it's like yeah maybe i could start early who knows <laughs> but yeah you gotta know. come back into the fold dave yeah i still gotta i still gotta do the game of thrones watch I did season one like three times. I couldn't. I know. I couldn't. Don't do that to yourself. Because the first six episodes, I feel like are a slog to get through. But once mm -hmm. you do. Watch yeah. this. And when you really enjoy it, you can continue on in time. Yeah. This will be my Better Call Saul. Yeah. This is the prequel yeah. series. And then mm -hmm. I, can, I can jump into that after. All right. It sounds uh, sounds like there's something, you know, we're, we're all in on. And then there's other things that we're like, eh, we're going to dip our toes in. <laughs> like, yeah. So a little bit of everything in, in this coming attractions mega segment. Mm -hmm. We have one more segment to get to. We have a lot to break down, a lot to rant about, a lot to discuss when it comes to Ozark. And in order to talk about it, we have to go back. So guys, send us back. back in time. I'm we're back, back baby. baby. Gotta get back in time. Ozark, the series finale, a hard way to go. Uh, let's see, all of season 4B dropped on April 29th. And here it all ends for the Bird family. But who makes out alive from the Ozarks? We will talk about it. We will spoil it. So this is your spoiler warning. If you don't want to know anything about Ozark season 4B or the finale, see you, see you next week. <laughs> okay? <laughs> we're spoiling Ozark here. This is what we're doing. I think... Yeah, so unfortunately, John, you're <laughs> spoiled. Uh, plug out your earphones, I guess, and just put random images yeah. up. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but I think it'd be the best, Kyle, to, to start at the finale and work our way maybe either backwards or talk about characters. Okay. But, but let's just give me your initial thoughts of this half season and then tell me what did you think of the finale? I thought the finale did a good job of trying to get, you know, these little pieces with everyone um, so that we get a little bit of, a, you know, closure for everyone. Um, but I will say I, I think I wasn't as impressed with this final half season um, as I was the rest of the series and maybe even going back to this full season in general – um, I think it just had too many irons in the fire and I don't know if it was thought out how, how this was all gonna work out or just, I felt, and we're going to, and I'll talk about more of this in advance, but like, uh, or later on, I mean, but it's just like, I felt the characters would get themselves into situations and then like, voila, they're out of the situation and I'm like, how did that, how did that happen? And then it, everything seems fine. I'm like, if you did this, if you did this thing, the potential consequences of this are like X, Y, and Z, and none of those things happen. So it was just like yeah. very, uh, We'll get to something that I was really pissed off about with a, something that they set up and then they didn't get back to in a little bit, um, a little foreshadowing about an event. But yeah, I agree completely with you. I, I've watched all four seasons, like within... The last, I don't know, a few months here I to catch up for this final batch that first dropped in January. And then we got the second half here in April. And for me, the issue I always had with this show 
was it was too much. It, it burned too hot too quickly, I thought. I think the early seasons, yeah, season one is good. Um, you know, but like it reminds me of like Glee season one where they packed like a season or two worth of storylines in like, you know, the first half season of Glee. That's what they did. They put too much in too fast. And I feel like this was like it. it sure. Those first, you know, seasons, you know, or the first few episodes were like, whoa, so much is happening. But then it's like, well, now you have to constantly up yourself and you have to constantly, as you were saying, more put more pans mm. in the fire, put more plates spinning. You have to do more, 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 mm. more. And then you can't handle it. There's too much. Yeah. Um, and there was a lot to do with this finale. I thought a lot of things were wrapping up too clean. Yes. Uh, everything was going like pretty happy. Everyone's, you know, and they're going to get out. Everything seems fine. And then about halfway uh, through the episode of the finale, it was like there's at this big fancy event at the casino and we have the character of Claire tell Camilla, who is Javi's mom, that it was Ruth who killed Javi. Mm. And then everything was like spiraling and it's like, OK, yep, we're not going to have the happy ending in the Ozarks here. It's going to be and I will I will do a quick nitpick and then we'll get to what you thought about this, Kyle. But I will say I always love how, you know, to quote Arrested Development, her with, with Ruth here, <laughs> like because like. Nobody, we know that Ruth is a badass, but like Camilla, the cartel super boss here, the mother of Javi, you know, who's like a Lalo, you know, from Better Call Saul, this crazy, perfect, mm-hmm. unstoppable force. It's like, she did that? The 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 one that's like this, this small little. Yeah. She did. She took down this. It's like nobody ever says that. It's just like. Oh, it was Ruth? Yeah, let's get her. It's just like, whoa, you know, that's my that's my first of a few nitpicks mm-hmm. here. But um, yeah, so what do you think after that moment, Kyle, and how everything unraveled uh, in the finale? I mean, just with uh, how Ruth talked about her family and how they set it up there, I, I just didn't think there was any way Ruth was going to come out clean in this yeah. because everyone in that town has been screwed over by the birds or the cartel in some way, and no one in their path gets out alive. So, um, I mean, uh, she kind of sealed her fate the minute she killed Javi. Yeah. But, um, but you know, she stood her ground. But, I, yeah, I didn't think there was any way that Ruth was going to survive this series. I just didn't think Yeah, that. especially for a show that kills everybody. You know, they always end a season or even just an episode with a big death. That was like mm. always the thing with this. Oh, wow. Somebody died. It's like in this final episode, I knew even before the episode started, I'm like, Ruth is probably going to be a goner. Like yeah. they need someone. And I was kind of actually disappointed with how she died. If that makes sense. Like she was shot by Camilla here, you know, she mm. was standing her ground, but like, like that's it. Like yeah. as for a character that was so pivotal to this series, I yeah. just thought it would have been a, a bigger well, because she's had such bigger moments, even the end of season four A, where she's you know screaming at the top of her lungs, you're like you're gonna have to kill me, yeah. and it's just like it kind of wasn't much. It was kind of almost like an afterthought because then we had this other scene right after that here, which we really need to to dive into, is with the private investigator. Um, mm. So he mm. figure figures out that Ben, Wendy's brother, there is inside that goat cookie jar. You know, the ashes are in there and I'm turning Marty and Wendy in. They're going to be able to do some DNA uh, forensics on those ashes. They'll be able to figure it out. But then Jonah shows up there with a shotgun pointed. It looks like the private investigator. Mm -hmm. We cut to black Sopranos and then we get a gunshot. Mm -hmm. So we get this ambiguous thing at the end here i guess did he do it and what did he do kyle <laughs> yeah i mean it's so it's so vague like i, I don't know i mean they could have ki- it's possible that he killed him but it's possible he could have just maybe shot the shot the the yeah. the, jar? the jar that's what i thought at first too because at first says because the private investigator is holding the ashes and you hear the gunshot but i also noticed that, like you didn't hear the 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 jar breaking on the ground or something or the jar being smashed. Uh So it's like, so that's why I was confused. I'm like, well, if you shot him more than likely the, the jar would also just fall. Or if you shot the jar to get rid of the evidence to have the ashes fly into the wind or on the ground Mm -hmm. or whatever, 
you would hear a break, but we didn't hear the break in either of those situations. Yeah. And so that's always like my first complaint of like, okay, well, if it's not them, like, like, why is this so ambiguous? Like, because the, I was listening to an NPR podcast right before we started Pop Culture Happy Hour. Mm. And they mentioned how like he is so estranged from his parents. And he and I guess I didn't miss this. He closes his eyes and then he shoots. So I was like, well, did he shoot Wendy or Marty? Like, you mm. know, and it's like, but if that's the case, why not just wait for the cops to come so they can go to prison? You have a gun on them like right yeah. now. The the P.I. is probably there. One quick call to the 911. Maybe he just thought like he because that he's seen them get get off so quickly and easily throughout the series. That's like, oh. This isn't, you know, I can't trust the police to actually have them in prison. Yeah, I just can't see, uh, you know, Jonah turning on them. Yeah. Even though he hated, uh, like, Wendy, I think he's still... Me too, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we'll get I, to that. <laughs> I still think, um, you know, his dad taught him everything he knows. Yeah. He still uses all the tools that his dad, you know, uh, taught him, so... Uh, there's that, and I think there was such an importance on Wendy getting the family back that this is Jonah's way of protecting, and it goes back to earlier in the series when he's shooting guns to protect uh, the family with Buddy and stuff like that. So I don't know if I could see him shooting Wendy and Marty. Because um, it's also only one gunshot. So yeah. It's like, so that's, that's why it's like, it's like am I, am I, I can't tell my feeling if I am mad at the show just for making it ambiguous for no reason or mm. for the ambiguity i can't i can't pinpoint what my my feelings are right now about it because well i mean i think the problem is there's a, there's the ambiguity in the the private investigator and even then if jonah kills a private investigator you have the whole thing with maya so maya is mm. still lurking in the background and i mean he was bringing information to Maya, so Maya's going to be around. And, you know, I think it's just like a realization that the story is not ending because these yeah. people yeah. Are, are... What's are, the moral of this at the end of the that, day? That like, you're never really getting, that you're never yeah. really getting it get out. Yeah. There's no yeah, way they're to get definitely, out. They're definitely still stuck there for sure now. I mean, I guess they're working for Camilla. I mean, Ruth yeah. is not leading the casino anymore. So yeah. it's like, I guess all the, you know, the little guys, all the underdogs end up dead mm. and it's like the bad guys win again it looks like uh i guess that's the the moral here but one thing i will say i was really angered about with this season is something that we see in the very first episode of season four and it comes back around here and it's this car accident cliffhanger mm. we got it in the season four a premiere back in january mm. and i just have to ask why why was this a cliffhanger because at the time I thought, okay, maybe there. It looked like I there was implied that oh, they're free, they're leaving the Ozarks, and yeah. then boom, oh, did they they get run off the road? I'm like, I can't remember. Like, yeah, did the did an SUV come and push them off the road? Yeah, and in this finale, no, we see it was a truck just in their lane, and then they, you know, they go off the road, they flip quite a few times, and then they're all fine. Yeah. They're all fine. Like they're they're walking out of a cab at home without a scratch on them, <laughs> without whiplash, without a concussion. Like they they were good enough to go to a fancy gala event that very night. Yeah. Like so I ask like why was this a cliffhanger other than to trick us? Yeah, that's all it was. That is all it was. It was a, a red herring. And it's like this to me basic spoilers for the Breaking Bad final season here is if like in the Breaking Bad opener of the final season, Walt, we see him with the machine gun in his trunk and then randomly in one episode, he just hands it to somebody and says, here, you go, there you go. And then we never see it again. That's what this <laughs> felt like to me. Yeah. It's like it, it was meant to because here, here, here's where I'll really go with this here. Netflix then had the audacity to show me even before the finale that yeah. they're all OK anyways in the app in yeah. the app. I have a screenshot here of what my TV looks like. And when you go to click Ozark, watch an episode, next episode here, the first one or 
two episodes, you saw Marty in Mexico at the head of a table. And I'm like, okay, sure. This is a spoiler for episode three when he starts running it from Mexico. But like, that could be anything. You don't know what that is. But it's clear when episode four pops up and I see the aftermath of a car crash and I see uh, Jonah and the daughter in the background, fine. Marty holding Wendy up. At least three of them are definitely fine. Wendy, it could go either way, but Mm. she looks okay. Again, why is this a cliffhanger and why are you showing it to me before I'm watching the yes. finale? Yep, that's true. I mean, I I I had another uh I had another um uh image or or thumbnail problem with Netflix on another show where mm. it ruined ruined something. So yeah. it's annoying. Mm. You think they would mm. uh get that stuff in order, but they, they flash any everything across other the screen. image from the season. Choose any other image from the season, from mm-hmm. the series, anything other than the one thing from the finale. D- d- just show Ruth getting shot. Why not? Like, it just makes no sense. And since I'm ranting, I will rant a little bit about Wendy. I I don't know about you, Kyle. I Laura Linney, not in this discussion. I'm talking about the character Wendy. Yes. I hate Wendy. Because Laura Linney plays it fantastic. She's great. There's just the the unearned confidence of of Wendy, the always blaming other people for her own faults. Like there's a point I have a couple of lines where it's like she says, like, I'm not falling on my sword because you effed up, Marty. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. you were the one that called Ruth to come to the hotel to get Javi. This is your fault. Yeah. And then she immediately goes home. She blames her daughter for telling Ruth the location. It's like. No, you just told Marty this was inevitable and that she was coming regardless. Like, she just has like this, like this confidence that this is not warranted. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I do not like Wendy Bird, the character. I think uh, she just is. Uh, I, I, some would say that she's protecting her family and whatnot, not, whatnot. Yeah. But what I would say to that but, is she's doing the exact opposite multiple multiple times throughout the series and when it looks like she can get out and when marty wants to get out and the family wants to get out she pulls them right back in so this whole thing is her fault and then she cries woe is me puts Hmm. herself in the mental institution to make all these things she's um uh, and it's just through all the characters in the show she's widely considered just yeah. a terrible, terrible person. Um, and some would say, you know, if she's running uh, running the kind of business that she is running, then she needs to be that way. But I will say that uh, what she does to her family makes her just a, just a terrible human and character to watch because yeah. even though Marty is in it on this stuff, his, he has an end goal in mind that's helping everyone out. And with her, it's selfishness a lot of the time. Yeah, it's the idea. It goes back to Walter White where it's like the idea is like, I'm doing this for my family. And it's like, are you? You're doing this for yourself. You're doing it because you like it. Like, mm-hmm. And uh, this whole thing where like she's fighting with her dad about keeping her, her kids with her, willing mm-hmm. to check herself into like a you know, psychiatric hospital. Uh, I just don't buy this at all. Like. Does she even want to be a mom? Like, even Marty doesn't understand this plan of her checking herself in. And Mm. for me, it's like, wouldn't this be even more for the judge? Like, they just had a hearing and it's like, well, you just got arrested in a road Mm. rage incident. And now you checked yourself into a mental hospital? Like, Mm. that's another red flag. And then she, like, tells somebody, it's like, you know, uh, like, image is everything in this world. That's why I got to get them back. And it's like, see right there. Like you don't want them for them. You want them because you want to paint this perfect picture of a family mm. for your for your cons, for your, you know, whatever, your next venture. Be like, you see, look at us. We're a perfect American mm. family. But And what we can say about this is that Charlotte and Jonah put in the position that they are, are between a rock and a hard place, but they don't even know what their grandfather's <laughs> like. And he's yeah. horrible too. Yeah. And she's not great. And they're putting, being put in danger there. So there really was a lose, lose situation. Um, yeah. When it comes to that, but uh, yeah, Wendy birds the worst. Man. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, yeah. so I just want to say going off that, I was getting frustrated that, 
Marty, who seemed to have more say earlier on, he just like floats into the background. <laughs> it's like, dude, come on, man. What are you doing? And even the, he, the kids are begging him to do something. He's worried about uh, running the going to Mexico and running the cartel. The, I never bought this. Like I, I, I like Jason, Jason Bateman. I like the character no. Marty. But like, there's no way that this cartel with that this white collar guy just come no. in. Like he needed to do something to really show that he meant business. Even then, I don't think they would believe him. But yeah, um, yeah. Uh, we met. You mentioned the grandfather character there. Yeah, like obviously he he is terrible. But I even felt like in this half season he was even worse than usual. He was so vulgar. He was such an a hole to Ruth, and you know. And then there's this other thing with this other character. Like I felt like there was a lot of character reasoning that was just for the plot in this final half because we needed mm. to get through the plot mm. that like they bring rachel back and she comes so easily back to the yeah. ozarks and it's like she says when ruth is visiting her you have no idea the hole i dug myself out of here Br- you're bringing me back to quicksand well then why mm. do you go like yeah why did you come back for yeah for what you don't like the birds you don't like the ozarks mm. it's trouble stay away yeah but we needed her there for for plot like we needed and that's what that was my my issue with uh, just with the half season i like i said the beginning seasons you know it was a lot of fun watching it but then i think like they didn't have the full plan to figure how everything connects and they got to the end and they're like oh how are we gonna wrap all this up we got a lot of plates spinning we got to put them all down now and i feel like they dropped a few yeah uh i don't think it was tight i think yeah. it's, it was entertaining all the way, I thought it was entertaining, uh, but I don't think it was a tight script or tight story. Yeah. Um. So I don't think it was uh, uh like Better Call Saul. When I watch Better Call Saul, I'm like, this show is tight. It made me appreciate Better Call Saul, Breaking Bad a little bit more because you realize what a tight script can become. I just think uh, they went too big too fast on on this one. Yeah. Um. And also, I have another problem. Uh, because of what something a character said later uh, in one of the episodes before the finale, how what is the time frame for everything <laughs> that happened? Because I heard that one of the characters say a year to like a year and a half or something like that. They said, "Oh, and this all happened within a year." And I'm like, "Wait, what? Are you are you like telling the entire me- four seasons of Ozark? You're saying in a year? Yeah, or is I'm it- like, so I was confused. Oh, that's a was good question. I don't know. Past? So. Because I'm like, this all happening within a year just sounds too crazy to me. So maybe it was just for that season they were talking about it happened within the past. Yeah, I'm trying to do some quick Googling here. It's hard to... Because there is real... They're saying season one of Ozark took place from June to September 2017. That makes sense. It was the summer in the Ozarks. So then, Uh let's see here. uh, By uh, Yeah, so that was... June of 2017. This article only goes up until season four, part one, and they're saying it goes that is to August 2018. So it so, is. So it's like a year. So it's so like a, possibly about a year. Yeah, which is crazy. If you yeah. think about all the corruption, everything that they had to happen yeah. within that year, and Jonah ages six years <laughs> in that year. I mean, oh my god, what? three looked like he gained <laughs> like three feet. Like. I know. Yeah, but it put those things aside. I mean, you want to talk about the outlandish storylines for it to happen within a year? I mean, wild, yeah. you know. Yeah, and uh, my my last little nitpick here before we go is they introduced some like new characters for no reason. I felt like in this season that they had the like rotating sheriffs coming in and out, and they had this sheriff uh, for the first episode or two, and then like. An episode later, it's like, ah, she had a she had to go back. Uh, here's the new sheriff for the last three episodes. It's like, okay, why? <laughs> and then and then it's some some random guy here. And then I love it, like in the second to last episode, Ruth felt so comfortable with the sheriff too. It was telling him everything about mm-hmm. what was going on, and you know that she killed Javi. And then it's like, you'll never find any evidence. And I'm thinking to myself, you did throw the gun, like maybe a foot. From your uh, little cliff there where you live at the Ozarks. And it's like, I think you could probably just, it's it sunk right to the bottom. It's probably two feet of water right there on the edge. Mm. I'm sure they could find that gun. I don't know if it was that well hidden. Yeah. But still, 
Um, Can I tell you one of my complaints yeah. about this end of the season, too? Mm-hmm. They killed Javi. Yeah. Do they not think that Camilla is going to be <laughs> upset about that? Marty goes down there and starts talking to her like, oh, yeah, we had to kill. We had to kill Javi, your son. And and then she he's like, oh, she's ch- chill with that. So then let me uh, let me, uh, you know, just tell her all my plans. This doesn't make any sense. Yeah, there's a lot of like openness sometimes where. Yeah. And there's like a lot of like, wait, didn't like Marty does not like Ruth here. But then it's like, oh, but he is like this father figure and he feels bad. But then he doesn't anymore. But then he does. And then it goes back and forth with conscious. I just thought it was insane that Marty wouldn't think of her adversarially yeah when you just had when her son just died and now you're saying navarro was the one that did it yeah. how does he not think that she's going to be upset well, it's, it made no sense to me yeah yeah okay with all that being said kyle ozark would you recommend people get back to the show uh you know sure. start you know any any new people worth it to watch ozark yeah, I, I do. I think it's entertaining. Uh, I think the performances are good. There's still some great scenes uh, where there's some intense moments, great action moments, great dramatic moments, uh, scenes with the family that are really good that you can see uh, dynamically actually happening. So overall, I think it's good. Uh, I just think it got too big for its britches and yeah. didn't know how to really handle all that. And there's some good performances. Definitely Julia Gardner as as Ruth. And is up Laura there. Linney as Wendy Bird does a great job, but Wendy Bird stinks. Because you love character. to hate her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that is it for Ozark. That's it for this week. Next week, we're doing something a little special here. Uh, the Boys Season 3 is dropping June 3rd on Amazon. And it's been a while since the last season. So we're going to do a little bit of a recap clip show of all of our coverage. From seasons one and two, we we pretty much talked about every episode of The Boys between those two seasons over like four or five episodes of the podcast. So you can either listen to the whole thing and use it as like a recap, or if you've never seen it, you can kind of watch it with us, you know, in, in chunks, you know, piece by piece there and get caught up for The Boys season three, June 3rd on Amazon. And then later in May, just to give you a little hint of what we got to come. We got a lot to talk about. Another Netflix show, season four, Stranger Things is coming back. Another part one issue here. Obi-Wan Kenobi is going to be on Disney Plus. And then Top Gun Maverick. We're going to be watching it. Oh, IMAX. yeah. We're going to give John a few extra dollars there. Fair enough. And, let, and watch it in IMAX for him. <laughs> but that is it for this week. Uh, I got to thank both of you guys. For joining me tonight for john obviously for directing the show and you know going to be making this clip show for me next week which you'll be able to find on youtube apple Podcasts, spotify the blog do live monday nights on twitch twitch.tv slash do and of course follow us on facebook twitter and instagram that's all we got for this week until next time i'm david allen i'm Trimmer. i'm cobridger and that's all we got for do goodbye everybody <laughs>